Hey there, just a quick run through on kind of the nuclear Armageddon we've been living through. This goes back to 2011. Radioactive leaks found at 75% of U.S. nuke sites. Radioactive tritium has leaked from three quarters of U.S. commercial nuclear power sites, often into groundwater from corroded buried piping and Associated Press investigation shows. At three sites, two in Illinois and one in Minnesota, leaks have contaminated drinking wells of nearby homes. Previously, the AP reported that regulators and industry have weakened safety standards for decades to keep the nation's commercial nuclear reactors operating within the rules. Uh, here, for example, cesium-137 turned up with tritium at the Fort Calhoun nuclear unit near Omaha, Nebraska in 2007. Uh, strontium-90 was discovered with tritium two years earlier at the Indian Point nuclear power complex, where two reactors operate 25 miles north of New York City. And here we have a map that shows all of the nuclear sites all over the country. It's a, uh, there's a lot of nuclear power plants. I'm so anti-nuclear power plants. I feel like it's a bunch of scientists playing with something that they really don't know what they're playing with. Like, yeah, they know, but they don't know. So after seeing that map and how many nuclear power plants there are in the United States, we're going to go through some headlines over the last few years. This is about the nuclear power plant, the San Onofre, off the coast of Southern California. The plant has been shut down since January 2012 after a small radiation leak led to the discovery of unusually rapid wear inside hundreds of tubes that carry radioactive water in the nearly new generators. Awesome. Here we have from 2013, radioactive tritium found in leak at South Carolina nuclear plant. More than 100 gallons of water containing radioactive tritium has leaked from a discharge pipe at the Catawaba nuclear station near Lake Wiley, South Carolina, and could reach groundwater. Here we have water leak prompts unusual event declaration at New Jersey nuclear plant. This was from November 24, 2015. Here, March 8, 2016, Florida nuclear plant cooling water leaking into National Park. Cooling canals connected to the Turkey Point nuclear plant south of Miami have leaked water containing high levels of radioactive tritium into Biscayne Bay. And here we have an article from March 2016, Nuclear Plants Leak Radiation and Regulator Faces Scrutiny. Five years after one of the worst nuclear disasters in history, America's nuclear plants still face safety issues. In its liquid form, tritium looks just like water, clear and odorless. Yet, it's radioactive, and in the past two months, two nuclear power plants outside New York City and Miami were found to be leaking tritium, the former into groundwater within the facility's confines, the second straight into Biscayne Bay. The leaks, revealed in news reports, apparently haven't contaminated drinking water and don't pose a threat to human health. Hmm. But tritium, while less potent than other substances like celsium or strontium or radium, can still be harmful in high enough concentrations, even lethal. The incidents came just a few weeks before the fifth anniversary of the meltdown at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant, which was sparked by a tsunami and earthquake and became the world's worst nuclear disaster since Chernobyl. And here we have April 29, 2016. Hanford, not Fukushima, is the big radiological threat to the West Coast. There is a dangerous radiological threat to the West Coast of the United States that puts the health of millions of Americans at risk. It includes dangers to public health, dangerous to the food supply, and dangerous to future generations from long-lived radionuclides, including some of the most toxic material in the world. It is not Fukushima. It is Hanford. While radiation from the Fukushima nuclear meltdowns is reaching the West Coast, carried across the ocean from Japan, the radiation from Hanford is already there, has been there for 70 years, and is in serious risk of catastrophe that could dwarf the effects of Fukushima even on Japan. Hanford on the Columbia River in eastern Washington state is the site where the United States produced the majority of its plutonium for nuclear weapons during the Cold War. Few things pose as great a threat to public health at Hanford than the tank farms. The tank farms are 177 single and double shelled waste storage tanks sited at two different locations on the Hanford complex. According to the state of Washington, the 177 tanks hold 53 million gallons of the highest level radioactive waste existing in the United States. 67 of the single shelled tanks have leaked over 1 million gallons of this highly radioactive waste which is migrating through the soil and groundwater into the Columbia River. And finally, I want to end here on Fukushima contaminated lives. 
Here we have from Takashi Sasaki, who has written a book called Fukushima Living the Disaster and has his own blog. He is not worried about being contaminated. He and his wife, who lies in the room next door, will die before the radiation can take effect. What troubles him is that nobody is taking responsibility for what has happened. They say it was an accident, but it's actually the result of having lost the essence of our culture, our contact with nature, our measured approach to work, our ceremonies. We have failed in terms of our education and our traditions. Nowadays, the Japanese gods are convenience and progress. Nuclear energy is a reflection of that, and the accident is a direct consequence. Incredibly wise words. And it's not just the Japanese who have their gods of convenience and progress. We are all guilty of it. And I hope in the world that we have that's keeping everybody busy and doing busy work that we will all realize that nuclear is our biggest threat. And I hope you will all be interested in this, that you'll follow some of these links and read some of these stories because it's something that I hope will make you go, hmm, that's interesting.